my dear Georgians and a very hearty welcome to our brand new show The Georgian Talk Show The motto of this talk show is to meet great personalities inspire ourselves with their life achievements and learn lessons from their life experiences and for this we have Dr. Allen among us today Dr. Allen is a MBBS family physician in Kurar village for more than 50 years he is closely associated with CMI fathers and CSC sisters of our school he is into social work for 35 years working for the tribal community in the Hanu area not only this Dr. has also honored by the Linda Book of Record for giving free immunization to 24,000 children. Dr. has also received Harmony National Award for service to community and Archdiocese of Mumbai Award for maximum service to Goa and India. Hearty welcome to you, Dr. Thank you. So, Dr. Allen. You have been into social work for so many years. So, how did the work started to inspire you to do this work? What was your inspiration? How you came into this field of social work, and how things are going on now? Yeah, social work is a way of life. If you have the inspiration, the inclination, and the dedication. And if you love doing it, it improves the overall well-being of the poor, the suffering, the sick, the oppressed, and the needy. Whatever we get in this world, a part of it we should give back to them. Whatever you do to the least of a brother, you do it unto me. Says the Lord in the Bible, give and it shall be given back to you in the same measure, even tenfold. Let the joy of giving become a part of your life. Words of the Bible. Jesus went out into the world, healing the sick and lifting up the poor and downtrodden. Sai Baba of Shirdi used to cook and feed the villagers. He cleared the wounds and healed them. Every religion teaches the same. 30 years back, Father Paul Karcheni, principal of St. George High School, this school took me to a remote Adivasi village near Dhar. Seeing the condition, of the poor villagers, we decided to start a dispensary, a free dispensary. And I have been going there every alternate Sunday day to day. Last Sunday was Easter and I was there. Gradually, we went into other fields like education, giving them educational aids, food and nutrition, hygiene, and daily needs of life, eradicating evils like alcoholism and smoking could be achieved only by being with them, living in the house, sitting with them. We started coaching computer classes and vocational classes for adults. Soon, I was joined by the FCC sisters. We have got now a Snay Southern Convent, the Old Age Home, Free Old Age Home, English Medium School for Adivasi Children, stitching classes for the girls, and the sisters continued the projects in the village. There are more than 80 positive, HIV positive. AIDS positive children in Asangaon looked after by the help of many sisters. Last so many years, I made it a point to visit them often, be with them, play with them, 
give them small things with their life. The message is, you don't get AIDS by touching them. I brought them to Malad, to my house, and for picnics to Malayali. In my clinic in Kulad village, I give free vaccination to children. Like she said, more than 24,000 children have been vaccinated. I remove eyeballs from their bodies for isolation. More than 250 dead bodies. More than five, that means more than 500 eyeballs have been removed by me and given to the eyeball. Let me tell you, when the blind man starts seeing after receiving cornea transplant from an eye bag, there is no more joy and pleasure which you can see in the world. When he starts seeing, the message is very strong. Donate eyes after death. Donate eyes after death. Don't bury them or burn them. Your idolation can give sight to two blind people. Religion and spirituality is a strong media for promoting values of life. I organized Palki Sahapadhyatra from Kuranbilay Molak to Shirdi. More than 250 Padhyatris with me. I ate with them, I sat with them, I slept with them, and I walked with them from Malak to Shirdi. For 28 years every year. The best gift you can give someone is your own time. Let me tell you, that's a part of your life which you have given, you cannot get it back again. That's a great That's work. That's a little of social work which has happened. That's a great work you are doing, Doctor. Indeed, if there is a will, there is a way. And as you said, Doctor, if you have the tendency, if you are dedicated to do something, Definitely you can be a successful person as you are today. <coughs> so that's a very great work you are doing. Thank you. Uh, so doctor, during the last two years, we have suffered a lot due to the pandemic. Many people lost their jobs and the situation was terrible. So did that have any effect on your social work? And how did you cope up with those difficult situations and continue to do your work? Yeah. During total lockdown, my visit to the Adivasi Dispensary Village was at a standstill. But Father Joshi, who stays there and has worked with me for so many years, continued giving treatment to patients with online consultation with me. I soon didn't wait, started working with a PPE kit. The BP kit was more for the protection of the Adivasi patients and also for me. It was difficult. My work of immunization giving vaccines, my work of eye donation has still not picked up as I used to do. These are bad effects of lockdown in our social work. So still, you should try your best to keep service oh, yeah. to who are. So yes, so that's very inspiring. Yes, that's very inspiring, doctor. And uh, yes, as you said, COVID-19 had terrible effects on the economy, uh, the social life, society, and lives of millions of people from all around the world. But you and your team, you are still present there, helping the needy, helping the poor. So that's very inspiring of you, Doctor, and that's very helpful of you. So thank you so much and keep doing the great work. My next question would be, Doctor, since we are interacting about COVID-19, will you please uh, tell us the effects of this deadly violence on the mental and physical health of people? Yeah, COVID-19 as a disease, it was a disease. 
but after COVID-19, after effects were seen in many patients, especially old and aged people, people, patients with comorbid conditions like diabetes, blood pressure, asthma, TB, all these diseases, people who suffered with these diseases had very bad long-lasting effects. What were they? Weakness, fatigue, but gone for days and months. Cough and cold often and impaired oxygen intake, both because of compromise of lungs. Mental and psychological effects were seen in patients, especially those who have gone through long standing and tough treatment of the way. People who have a long time in ICU, who have a long time in the hospital for recovery, they were the people who went into mental disturbances. Yes. Okay, so that means the virus really had dreadful effects on our life, but still people are coping up with those situations. They are taking care of themselves, they are practicing yoga, they are cautious about their diet, nutrition, then hygiene, cleanliness, people are getting aware of all of this. So of course of COVID-19 had dreadful effects on us, terrible effects and the situation was terrible. But still people are coming up with new strategies, new ways to keep themselves healthy and even doctors are treating people. So doctors are like, uh, during the pandemic, during the COVID, doctors were like worshipped like gods. Like uh, how God healed. As you said previous, previously, uh, for Jesus Christ, He healed people. Then Sai Baba, He used to make food for needy, the poor one. Similarly, in this uh, lockdown, in this period of COVID, doctors, all the uh, community workers, they were worshipped as God. So that's very great work you all coming, uh, community workers are doing and we will be always grateful to you doctor. Uh, so doctor, taking into current situation, uh, all of us have learned as you said the mental health and physical health is very important. So could you give us some more tips which we can uh, inculcate in our lives which will be helpful for us in the future so that the virus won't come again if it, even if it is there we can uh, have the already we have the remedies so we can just cope up with those situations uh, we like to share some point of view on this yeah though number of covid cases have drastically reduced i would still tell you that everybody we have to be cautious if you find you have Cold, cough, fever, not being cured by routine good treatment. Go and get tested. It's free. Wear a mask. Continue wearing a mask even now in public places when you interact with people. Get vaccinated. Take your vaccines. Don't be lax on vaccination. Children have to be more taken care of for industrial why? Because they are not vaccinated, they are more prone to get problems. The WHO still says there could be another COVID wave. There could be another variant. So be careful. You got to get really cautious. Thank you so much doctor for sharing such helpful tips with us. Uh, we will definitely try to involve these tips like wearing a mask, uh, maintaining social distancing and all the precautions, all the areas which are told by uh, told to us by the authorities, authorities of India, authorities of uh, all around the world. We will try to inculcate, we will try to involve those tips, those suggestions in our life. And Definitely, uh, the WHO has a statement like the COVID third wave or the another wave can be come back. So we will we will be ready to face that problem, we will face that pandemic together. Uh, 
so my next question would be doctor you are a great counselor all of us know that so could you give some pointers to our parents our children those who are watching us we give some uh, tips to us to build up our relationship more and make it stronger i am not a preacher i am not a teacher i am not a counselor as she said i only talk of what i have learned during my course of life i tell you diet nutrition behavior and social interactions are points which will touch and tell you some few tips which are important always start your day with a good breakfast even if you have to rush early to school college or work have a proper portion of meal don't overeat when you see beautiful food something which you like <laughs> no avoid junk food burgers what about Excuse me. Avoid alcohol in any form. Avoid tobacco and smoking. People tell me, "Oh, you develop a bad personality by smoking, having a cigarette in your mouth. You enjoy a party drinking. No, it does no good to you. It causes more harm to you." and go to your family I would say in these hot days drink enough of water so that you pass urine 3 to 5 times in a day add a small fruit into your daily food even if it's a small cheap banana limit your sugary and caffeinated drinks push a little physical exercise in your daily routine you're lucky if you can go to a gym or go for a walk in the morning but it's not always necessary think your daily work you have to go to station to catch a train to go to college or go to work don't go by a shabby auto walk down to the station that's a part of physical exercise that do i know it's difficult you are late better if you are late you will run faster don't overstress yourself by putting goals in life everybody cannot become a 90 percentile if you are stressed if you are feeling low look up to your parents look up to your senior relatives at home to your teachers to religious heads and many times to your friends because sometimes your friends might help you and give you solace live a good life for yourself and that will also give a good life to all around you great doctor very well said so parents and children that was tips and those were tips for you eat healthy food avoid junk food exercises and all the suggestions which were told by doctor and doctor one more thing i would like you to highlight about the relationship between parents and the children mm -hmm. now there is the problem the teenagers they don't like uh, accompanying with parents So, do you have some suggestions for them also? Yeah, a lot to tell the parents. I know, even I have not changed much. I do things sometimes, which I don't do things all the things which I preach. But let me tell you, spend time with your children, especially in the activities, by playing, eat together with them, sit down and eat with them. possible sleep with them don't say oh this is my ipl match which i'm interested in i'll go and watch the match 
your, your child is sitting behind. Oh, you do your studies, you do your homework. No. You give up your study uh, match and sit with your child for the homework. Correct. Okay. It's very important. Be with your child. Praise your child in whatever he does in his activities, especially in his studies, whatever his performance is. Everyone may not hit a six, but a good stroke play is clapped for. It's very important that you praise your child. Never comment, pass comments or put him down, especially in front of others. I see examples. अरे मेरा बेटा कितना मैं इसको ट्यूशन देता हूँ कितना इसके पीछे पढ़ता हूँ मगर मैथमेटिक्स में कभी ऊपर नहीं आएगा. No, never say that. Instead of that, so tell your child, हाँ बेटा इस वक्त वो 38 परसेंट आया पास हो गया. मैं आपके साथ में हूँ मैं हूँ ना. Go ahead, study hard and you'll need 60 next time. That's what you want to say. Don't put him down. It's very really important. Avoid TV, electronic media, mobile, especially when you're eating your food. I've seen people. They don't know what they're picking up and they don't know where they're putting the food. They're watching the Netflix. Don't do that. I even tell some of my friends, don't have a TV in your bedroom. You'll be tempted to watch Netflix and sleep late. Oh, uh, these are a few things I remember. And finally, I would say, love your child, accept him, whatever he is. Never compare with other children. Your child is your child. Love him and accept him. Great doctor. So parents, children, the tips are for you. Parents, praise your children no matter how he is or she is. Praise him, appreciate them and definitely you will see progress in them. As doctor said, if he is getting 38, if you praise him, definitely next exam he will be scoring double of that. So praise him, appreciate them and even children, listen to your parents. It's not only parents fall, both have the equal side. So if you are wrong at any side, if you, are, if you know that you are wrong, accept your mistake, listen to your parents and work together and definitely you will have success in your life. So doctor, the last question, we have come to the end. A small message to our audience please. Oh. St. George High School or St. George School, I have seen it grow from a small four to five chalk type rooms with mangrove tiles, kaula, kaula on the top, at the end of the ground. Today, you see beautiful buildings, a beautiful structure, and more than the structure, a great performance. All that is possible only by the efforts, by the hard work of the teachers, the pupils and the staff, the fathers and the sisters who have been into it day in and day out. And more than all of them, you, dear students, you are a big contribution for the greatness of the school. I would advise you take advantage, take the fullest, reap the fullest fruits of this school. Make your life a success in whatever you do. If I had a couple of minutes, I would say sure, I remember Fatima Devi School, 11 years, a small school in Malad. It has made me a doctor and given me a successful life. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Jai Hind, Jai Maharashtra.